So one of the most important changes we made in moving into this new facility was building out our own test infrastructure. That includes the vibration tables, some smaller thermal vacuum chambers for individual electronics units, and then the big boys, the full-size satellite thermal vacuum chambers. Yeah, this is literally ginormous. Our entire satellite goes in here. To give a rough scale, I think our satellite, you know, it's a dishwasher size. I could hug it if I wanted to. And it fits in this chamber really nicely with room for the heat plates that are on either side of the chamber. So TVAC testing stands for thermal vacuum. So basically the purpose is we take our hardware or in this case, the entire satellite and we shove it in this thing and we test it to simulate the environment of being up in space. The reason the thermal vacuum test is so important is that is the only way to really test your electronics in the space environment. If you dissipate a lot of power, it has to go somewhere. Well, there's no fan, there's no air, where, where does it go? It has to all conduct and radiate out. In space, you don't have convective cooling at all. There's no air. You only have radiative cooling. That is the only way to get all of your excess heat and energy off into space. Radiative energy is dispersed at a rate that's proportionate to the temperature to the fourth power. If you can get something sitting hot and operating at those high temperatures, you can radiate away that much more energy. And that's what we do with our high power amplifiers. If I say thermal chamber, you might think an oven, maybe an oven that might go cold. This is thermal vacuum. So when you go in there, you seal it tight. You suck all the air out of it. And basically from the satellite's perspective, it doesn't know it's not in space. So with each test, we put the satellite into the chamber and pump it down and start about a two week test campaign. We test the satellite across this huge range of conditions all the way down to negative 180 degrees Celsius when it's in total eclipse. We take it all the way up to positive 65 degrees Celsius when it's being bathed in solar radiation in total sunlight. That allows us to test all the conditions that the satellite would see in space. And we do that over about a two week period. We do a lot of simulations, a lot of calculations, a lot of analysis. There's nothing like doing it for real. So these chambers let us emulate that and really make sure our hardware is gonna work when it's up there. <laughs> a lot of places in the world that can go do this. I think we searched every single one in this continent maybe hit three or four different places. Before we had to actually send our satellite out to a test facility that was in a whole different city. Booking those chambers is difficult. And if you don't hit your test date, that is when stuff is on the line. It's substantial money, like very substantial money. It's very competitive to get time in these chambers. And so we sat there with one of those little scoreboard counters slipping down day by day until you are ready. And when that day hits zero, you pack it up, you get in the van and you go. We basically, we used to lift the vehicle up, we'd put it in the shipping container, go through the whole packing ordeal. Never an ideal situation to do. At our old office, which was on kind of a hill, there was a lot of traffic, a lot of angry drivers that don't like it when you block a lane. And the second you get there, you do not stop. It is a long drive down to LA in that truck. Through the night, basically, and I think there was like a huge snowstorm. There was weather at the peak of the grapevine and they had closed the roads going both ways. You hallucinate when you get past a certain point, and I don't know, maybe I probably should have pulled over and stopped driving, but nah, mission comes first. We gotta get this there. And you've gotta get out of the truck, get it in the chamber, get it all hooked up. And the entire time, you have this incredibly difficult balance of doing it right, doing it fast, doing it the first time, never messing up. Now that we have this thing here, we don't have to do that anymore. Uh, we can build the satellites like right over there and then we'll wheel the thing on over into the chamber and pop it inside. Much, much shorter commute than going down to LA with all of the people and support equipment needed to, to run the vehicle. And now we can just exhale. It is so much easier to just go around. We have so much more flexibility, control, the ability to develop our tests, to get them right, to figure it all out. We're all huge time savings. Everyone's happier. Um, LA is cool, but we're all super stoked to do it in-house. We can design things here in-house. We can manufacture here in-house. And instead of having to load up a truck, get a team of five people, where are they gonna eat? Where are they gonna sleep? How are we gonna get them there? This is the difference between me not sleeping for two weeks straight, me going to bed and sleeping contently. We're gonna ramp up to full production scale of two satellites a month. You can't do that sending your satellites out to some other test facility to run these tests and then have to bring them back and forth, back and forth. It was a huge project to get these in place, but we're very glad we did. There's just no way we'd be able to do everything we wanna do without them. That aggressive Astronish roadmap, that speed is what sets us apart from the rest of the market. That is what will help us continue to revolutionize the telecommunications sphere.